Hey guys, Randy Pike from Tekin again. Uh, here's the 10 scale redline motor. This is an 8.5 brand new. I'm going to show you how to take this apart, swap the rotor out, clean it up a little bit, check a, take a look at the timing ring on the back and sensor board and whatnot. So let's get started with that. Three, three, three screws right here, 330 seconds. Let's go ahead and pull those out. Set them aside. And take the front end bell off, just slide that, put it off to the side. You can see a red phenolic ring right here. I'll just go ahead and tip the motor upside down. That'll fall out, set it on top of the, the end bell. You can see the front Y plate. Simply grab the rotor, with your two fingers by pinching, and pull this out. Okay, right there's your rotor. It's a standard 12.5 Tegan rotor there. At that point, you're going to take a 2 millimeter or a 564 wrench, pull off the rear end bell cap. Take that off, set that aside, and here's your rear bearing. Now you can take an Allen wrench to push this out. It's actually seated in the sensor board, and you can see that this floats around. This is your timing adjustment here. Um, I pretty much stop right here, grab a brush, kind of, you know, lightly scrub, get all the dirt and grime out of here. Same with this. Use a can of compressed air to blow out the dirt. That's pretty much all you need to do. Um, I don't re-oil these bearings. They're sealed pretty well. Um, if they get rough, they really need to be replaced. I mean, I don't even bother cleaning these things out or doing anything like that because you'll never really get all the grit out of the bearing uh, unless you take the cages apart completely and on a, on a bearing like that it's it's probably not going to be happening all that well so just do a little scrub down if they're spinning free uh, one way i check that is i actually take the rotor out here set the front end bell on this thing and seat it spin it like that make sure it's not grimy or dirty or anything like that if it spins fine it's good same thing with this i'll hook it up backwards like this and spin it you can feel if it's grimy, gritty, dirty, or otherwise. If it's not, it's good to go. The most important thing to do when you reassemble this motor is to really have a firm grasp on the rotor. You do not want this to slam down and bang the sensor board inside. So what I do is I just hold it really firm, and I actually don't move this. I actually move the can into the position and let it seat. And then once I do that, a little wiggle, and you can usually seat it right down and reassemble the motor. Do not forget to put the phenolic plate on there. It's very important. These don't have to be overly tight. You are screwing into an aluminum CNC housing, so snug is usually good enough. Um, if you're running off-road, maybe a small dab, a dab of blue Loctite will help out, but you really shouldn't need it. Same with this. A lot of guys over-tighten these rear screws. Now, what you got to understand is this rear plastic plate actually preloads the bearing with the seat here. If you over-tighten this, you'll deform this plastic piece, and it won't preload the bearing properly. So again, just snug. These, these really aren't holding anything together as far as the motor is concerned. It's just setting the timing on the motor so this rear end bell doesn't move around on you. Make sure you get all three in there before you tighten them up. Factory out of the box timing is 12 degrees, so that's where I'm going to put this motor back. And that uh, actually is right here. This one tab is going to line up with the decal on the motor. So set it at 12 degrees and snug up the screws. Again, just snug, not tight. You're not, you know, having to wrench this down. It's not holding anything position other than keeping the motor timing plate from moving. That's it.